do you think they were right? I haven't seen Toy Story 4, so <laughs> I'm not sure. Hi, I'm Josh Cooley, director of Toy Story 4. And I'm Mark Nielsen, one of the producers on Toy Story 4. And today we are here to discuss some Toy Story 4 fan theories that we found on the internet. Okay, whoa, oh, whoa, step back. Just... Out loud. Thank you. This is Reddit user Silo Lamb has a theory about Forky. What if Woody is the reason that Forky became alive and not Bonnie? Woody is the first one to touch the trash that would become Forky, so you could consider that Woody wanted Forky to be a toy like him for Bonnie. Also, the whole movie, Woody is worried sick for Forky, as if he knows Forky is alive because of him. The fact that Woody pulls the craft supplies out of the garbage can, places it in front of Bonnie, Silo Lamb thinks that, that maybe Woody had this plan all along, but the, he didn't, he just wanted to get some craft supplies back in front of Bonnie. And then later on, he does see how much Forky means to Bonnie, so he is trying to take care of Forky and bring him back to Bonnie the whole time. Hello, I'm Forky. Nice to meet you. The toys in Toy Story are immortal. They can't die. I mean, they can be crushed or incinerated, but they will never die of old age. So what does this mean for our heroes? They will outlive every owner they have. The story of Andy growing up and leaving their lives will continue ad nauseum until the last of humanity is gone, or the toys have all been incinerated. The torture toys in the first movie are still alive, albeit horribly mangled. They are stuck like that forever, or until Sid cleans his room, throws them into the garbage can, and sends them to their fiery death. This also means that the only way they can die is kicking and screaming into something that will destroy their entire body. If pieces of them still exist, they're still aware. We've seen this with Mr. Potato Head. He's able to feel and use his body parts when they're away from him. Their soul may reside somewhere in the head then. Or if there is no head, then there's central mass. <laughs> now, what does this mean for mankind? Well, it means that once we're all dead or gone, the toys inherit the earth. That seems yeah, plausible. That seems right. I, I kind of buy that. I think I think Nameless 88 is onto something. One of the things I've heard is that maybe the, the toys are uh, some sort of vampire that instead of sucking blood, they suck the joy out of children <laughs> and live forever. <laughs> But, uh, you know, we never really thought about that when making the movie. It's more about just family and being friends. We'll be there for them, together. John Negroni, who is known online for creating the theory that all Pixar movies are connected, also has a theory about Andy's mom. Andy's mom is Emily. Uh, that's Jesse's previous owner. You remember the story of Jesse. Her owner, Emily, grew up with her, much the same as she was with Andy. She was incredibly loved, but Emily eventually gave her away when she grew older. I compiled all of the evidence and I found some incredible support for this theory. For one thing, take a close look at Andy's cowboy hat and take a close look at Jesse's hat. It's the same red hat with white lace that Andy wears. If I got this correct, he's saying that that Jesse's owner is, is Andy's mom. Yes, that is the theory. Because they have the same color hat. Red hat, it's all about the red hat. Uh, I'm not convinced yet. I believe there's more than one red hat in the world. But we would love to know more about your um, incredible support of this theory, so please contact Mark Nielsen. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Duke. No. -uh. Duke. No way. Duke. Pass. Duke. Negative. Duke. Rejected. <sighs> all right, Reddit user, just a typical ginger, has a theory about Andy's dad. Good name. My theory is that Andy's father is dead. Andy has clearly attached himself to Woody and Buzz in all of the play scenes. One could almost call them fatherly. This could imply that Andy is missing a father figure in his life and this is why they're his favorite two toys. This being said, it doesn't answer the question of why there is no photos of Andy's dad anywhere in their house. Well, I will say that the reason that you are feeling this way is because we treated Woody as a father figure to Andy throughout all the films. In terms of his dad though, I know, uh, being dead, that's taken it pretty far. I, I'd like to think maybe they split up. Um, maybe he's still alive and, and living somewhere in another town. Witness protection, maybe? Maybe he was part of the CIA and is, is deep undercover. Maybe Woody belonged to Andy's dad and he gave him to, to Andy before he left. Maybe he left under suspicious circumstances. Any of those are possible. We don't need to know because it's really all about serving the story of Woody playing the father figure That's role exactly in saying. Andy's life. I don't know about witness protection that much, but I know that you don't talk about it, and so we didn't talk about it. So, <laughs> I mean, it's kind of obvious he's in witness protection. Yeah. So many choices, I just can't decide. Sci-fi.com has a theory about the symbolism behind Woody and Buzz. What if Woody represents Andy's real dad? More Andy's dad. Wow. 
while Buzz represents his cool stepdad. <laughs> that could be, although yeah, we don't see the stepdad, do we? He's that cool. I think he's just, <laughs> he's just probably like on a motorcycle somewhere for most of the movie, just being cool. I feel like the stepdad would be present in, in the family if that was indeed the case. Unless the stepdad took off after Andy's dad went into the witness protection program. <laughs> Dad yeah. left, his cool stepdad left. On a motorcycle. Who, who knows who else took off on Andy, so. Okay, Reddit user JimmyLegs50 <laughs> has a theory about Toy Story and the TV show The Walking Dead. Uh, the zombie show has many simul similarities to the Toy Story films, including a sheriff who has a kid he would do anything for and who leads a group of social misfits, a hyper macho best friend, there's also a yodeling cowgirl and a lotso like psychopath like the governor in the TV show. Mm. I've heard this theory before. Um, it's an actually a pretty incredible coincidence. Yeah, this question might be more for the Walking Dead creators than, than for us. Right. <laughs> I mean, which came first? I feel like Toy Story might have come it first. Have, yeah, I think Toy Story came first. So, hey, Jimmy Legs 50, you should uh, contact walkingdead.com, see what they say. Get those guys a call. Yeah. What if Boo from Monsters, Inc. is Bonnie from Toy Story 3? Wow. Whoa. That's blowing my mind. We actually have a character that we put in Toy Story 4 that has been confused by many fans as being as Boo. As Boo. She's in the kindergarten scene when Forky's being created. She's in the background. She has a pink shirt and pigtails. And then right at the carnival, she yeah, loses. She's losing right before you pan up to Ducky yeah. and Bunny and meet them. Maybe just because it's a younger girl and then Bonnie is a little bit older. So that might be the connection they're going for. But um, unfortunately, that's not how, this is a how tough things one. work. It's a tough one for me to buy into. <laughs> there's lots of little kids and then older kids in life. And they're not all related. They're not all the same people. <laughs> <laughs> but we did accidentally put Boo in the movie twice. Reddit user 1337 and zero. Toy Story and Home Improvement are in the same universe. <laughs> you can see a Binford toolbox in Toy Story, which is the name of the tool company from Tim Allen's show, Home Improvement. Right. You're right. There is a Binford toolbox that is on top of the crate uh, that Buzz is under in the first Toy Story. Yeah. I don't know that it was more than a nod to Tim Allen. Maybe that's who Andy's dad is, Tim the Toolman Taylor. Oh, wow. Which would explain a lot. Reddit user London Garbage Man, who has the theory that troublemaker Sid may have changed his ways. In Toy Story 1, Sid is confronted with a horrifying revelation that his toys are alive. 15 years later in Toy Story 3, we see that Sid has become the local garbage man. Now let's imagine you're a guy who's just learned that inanimate objects are alive. What job would you get? Sid isn't working a crappy job, he's trying to save them. He's trying to save the toys. He picked the one job where you can rescue those things, and Sid is uniquely equipped to fix those toys that he finds that are broken. He's pretty darn creative. I, yeah, I agree. You mean that happy child? I think Sid's like probably the most creative child in all of the Toy Story movies. Sid's a good dude. <laughs> Sid's a great guy. He's just misunderstood. Yeah. <laughs> Andy, what, what was Andy doing? He wasn't doing anything. Sid is the one that was really had a vision. And he's cleaning up the streets. <laughs> Which is great. RMAA2910 may have figured out the ending to the movie. Woody has given Bonnie love, joy, etc., and is chilled out with Buzz and friends. But there's something he is really missing and kind of lacks of. Love. What would be more emotional than Woody saying goodbye to Buzz and company? and now he wants to be independent. Oh, I see. So this was written before they saw the movie. Yes. Oh. We went through a lot of different endings for Toy Story 4. The first one we had was, everybody came back to Bonnie's house and everything was normal as usual, and, but uh, it wasn't emotional enough. We had another ending where Bo didn't come back, but Woody still found her and was able to kind of let go of that relationship. And then the last ending is the one we made, which is that Woody, and, and you know, decides to be uh, on the road with Bo. I think w once we realized that for Woody to really change in this movie, yeah. um, he could not go back to Bonnie's room. And things had to be different too. He couldn't, he couldn't go into Bonnie's room and, and beat the favorite toy because we've already seen that. We've seen that for three movies. So we had to change it up and make it feel like this is a completely different chapter in Woody's life. Does this mean Woody's a lost toy? 
He's not lost. Not anymore. What have we learned from all this? I mean, I've learned that a lot of people are heavily invested in, in digging deeper into these stories. Deeper than we ever uh, thought as we were making them, which is kind of actually cool. Yeah, I, lo I love that. I think that's great. I will say that there's so many more theories that you guys haven't even come up with that are actually correct. So keep digging. Keep digging. Keep looking, man. Dig deeper.